field notes in anthropology are an incredibly uh, important aspect of doing the practice of anthropology in the field. So this video is going to be all about taking notes in the field. I'm going to start off by saying that field notes are, on the one hand, incredibly personal in the sense that everyone's going to develop their own style and preferences. But they are also incredibly important to be readable because they are the record of what you did. Now, depending on what kind of fieldwork you're doing, your notes may actually be, um, you know, public record. They may be, you know, your own property. They may be public property. They may also be um, something that cannot be disseminated because of privacy concerns, especially if you're doing human subjects research and you have something called an IRB protocol or Institutional Review Board protocol in which any personal identifying information needs to be kept confidential, your notes may actually have to be kept locked up after you get back from the field or every night or whatever it is. So it's important to understand the context within which you're taking the notes and the reasons for what you're taking them. Now, I am an archeologist, so my field notes are typically not confidential in that matter, but they do contain my primary research data findings. So uh, it's important that I take them in a relatively standardized way. My personal preference are for smallish sized notebooks. They're easy to put into a pocket. You can put them into the outside pouch of a backpack. Uh, and you'll notice that I label them sort of by year. And I mostly just use one notebook for one year. Um, and so maybe I'll have two or three field projects in a given year and some other kinds of notes, conference notes, that kind of stuff. And I organize them that way. If I'm doing a really big, long-term, specialized field project, I'll have a separate notebook that I use just for that field project over and over again. Um, the kind of notebooks that you get, again, are going to be personal. If you mostly are taking written notes, especially if you're doing, let's say, cultural anthropology, you might want something that just has, you know, ruled pages. You might want a larger notebook than this because they're a little easier to write in. Uh, you might want to check that binding. Spiral binding might be useful because you can fold them flat open and, and write that way. Some people really just love the books. Uh, you can see I have not used this one. I, this is what I got. My personal preference as an archaeologist are for graph ruled notebooks because I can draw scale drawings in them. Uh, I think this particular one is a mole scheme. But last time I was traveling through East Asia uh, in the airport, I found these Japanese millimeter notebooks, which are just amazingly sized, a perfect size for me. And they have um, five millimeter grids in them, which is just like perfect metric is what we use in archeology. span So uh, I have one here, where is it? Oh, I was gonna show you that. I have one here that has um, 2017 field notes from Italy and Kazakhstan. So I actually did back-to-back -back field seasons and I used just the one notebook for those two uh, field experiences. So firstly, you'll notice that I have some loose leaf stuff in there. When you get in the field, things get messy. You, you have to pull sheets out of order and you put them in here. Um, you also notice that that some of these are not actually in my own handwriting because the whole team sometimes uses one notebook. In this particular case, this is a photo log from Italy, and they're just numbers of photos that we took. I do a lot of drawings. Again, I'm an archaeologist, I'm a geoarchaeologist. So this is a drawing of some river terraces in an area that we were surveying. These are mostly sketch maps. You know, I do them sort sort of to scale, but um, mostly sketch maps. And then identified on the map, uh, on the next page, I have the symbols and then I've got my notes that I'm writing about them. And it depends on what kind of notes that I'm writing, but I try and go in order and I try and keep them well identified. It's important if you're doing something numerical that you write down the numerical information. And it's always interesting to put little sketches in there. These are things that are incredibly informative. The most important thing is to make sure that everything is well labeled. Um, let's see, let's go back a page. Forward a page, where is it? Finding, uh, okay. So 
Here, for example, is a drawing of a sediment profile that I studied. And you might notice that up at the top, oops, over here, I importantly have the date and the location and a little brief description of where I'm at and what I'm doing. And I also have things like north arrows and all kinds of notes and that kind of stuff. So it's very important, especially if you're using this for more than one project or over a very long period of time, you know, a bunch of these kinds of things in here that you um, label them uh, particularly well. So you can at least make a new page and at the top of it put the date. Some people get very organized with little stickies that stick out, you know, for different projects or for different years of the projects. Um, I tend not to be quite so organized, but I uh, am reasonably organized when it comes to that. And then you're going to want to keep them pretty well organized once you get home. Sometimes it's a real pain when it's several years later and you're trying to go back to the primary notes. You're writing up something that you come back to after a while. You can't find where did I, I knew I saw something and I knew I wrote it down. Where is it? Where is it? So I keep them all. I mean, I just messed up my order, but I keep them all actually on the shelf up there uh, unless I'm actively using them. So a couple notebooks will come off the shelf, take them with me to the lab or wherever I'm working. But I always remember to put them back. So it's really important to stay organized and on top of it. Now, what are you noting down? It all depends on what the research project is. Again, I'm an archaeologist, so we are site-based or we're survey-based. When we're doing sites, we often use actual forms. So I wouldn't necessarily use a, a freehand notebook like this. We would have a binder. We would sort of print out the blank forms ahead of time. And the forms help us uh, basically to stay on target so that we don't miss stuff. These days, I don't do anything uh, in when I'm doing form-based stuff. I don't do anything on paper. I use a tablet or my phone. We have apps and I build the survey forms into them. And we just simply do, it's real easy. You can type with your thumbs, but mostly it's pull downs and check boxes. And it makes it really fast, really automated. So ultimately, you want to get your quantitative data into a spreadsheet or a database so that you can actually do some statistics with it. And doing it digital from the start is very helpful in that regard. Uh, I have written some papers on this topic and I've given some presentations. So if you're curious about it, uh, I'll put a couple of links in the just below this video uh, on the Canvas page today and you can check that out. Um, if you're doing something that's a little less formalized or if I'm doing sort of just general reconnaissance survey, that's really when I still like to use a notebook rather than the digital stuff because it becomes harder and harder to, to sort of, uh, you know, when you create forms, you basically lock yourself into a structure of data recording. And that's useful because it means that everything is standardized and regularized and you'll always record the same data. But it also means that if you find something new that you weren't expecting, you either have to break your whole previous form uh, or you, you should be recording in a more freehand kind of, kind of style. So if I'm doing systematic survey, I do have apps and we do use them there. But if I'm doing just reconnaissance survey, which is a lot of what, what I tend to do in the field, again, I will take my notebook. Um, the other good thing about the digital uh, recording techniques is that because your camera or your phone has a camera in it or your tablet has a camera in it, you can attach the, the photos that you take directly to the notes, which saves a lot of hassle. When you do notes by hand, if you're doing photographs or videos or audio recording or any other kind of secondary digital recordation, you have to make a note of that. And so I showed you in, uh, I'm already losing track of which notes are which. Uh, I showed you in here that one of the things that we have to do is create this pretty annoying cumbersome photo log when I'm doing this. And then when I get back from the field, I have to go through my SD card from the camera and scan my notes or create a database, type everything in and attach the photos, organize it sort of after the fact. And there's always room for, for error and that kind of stuff. Um, the other downside of handwritten notes is again, you might be really organized, but everybody needs coffee or whatever to wake up in the morning. You might forget something because you know the form didn't rem remind you of it. So depending on what you're doing, if you're Let's say you're doing more like participant observation or uh, distant observation in an ethnographic context. Freeform notes might be the thing, and you're just sort of writing narratively about what you see. That might work for you. 
let's say you're more archaeology or you're doing like um, primatology and you're following in the field, you might get away with freeform nodes, especially if you're just sort of noting times and, you know, putting a GPS tag or something like that. But more and more, it's probably become beneficial to use forms, whether they're paper or digital, to make sure that you don't forget, you know, what you're going to do. And uh, in terms of the design of the forms, that's really going to vary depending on the project that you're doing. And at your stage as students, if you get involved in field work, it's not going to be your responsibility to make the forms, but it would be your responsibility to fill out the forms correctly. And I know it can be annoying to always have to check boxes that don't aren't meaningful in a particular case, but whoever designed the form designed it for a particular reason. So check the boxes, fill out all the pieces. Don't leave anything blank in the form. Make sure you at least write NA somewhere because nothing's worse than having set up a bunch of forms, pass them out to your field crew, then you get back afterwards and you're going to do data entry and there's a blank entry. And you go, did they forget to fill this in or was there nothing there? It's actually very different between the two things. So very important thing that if you find yourself working, let's say your first job in CRM or you're doing your first field school or you're doing a research experience, if there are forms, fill out every single bit of the form. And if there's nothing to record, make sure you note there's nothing to record. And if you're doing CRM, and I'll tell you this from personal experience, you're going to dig a lot of empty holes in the ground. Don't just turn in a blank form. Write down found nothing. Right. Whether it's a level form or a whole unit that you're excavating, fill out everything, even if it's negative. Okay. I think that's basically it. Uh, if you have any particular questions about forms uh, or the way that I create my forms or about the way that I create my notes, happy to answer those. You can either send them in by email in the discussion forum, uh, you know, for this class, whatever you like, and I will answer them. Hopefully that helps and hopefully you get inspired to take some great notes when you uh, hopefully get to do some field work of your own.